So what I'd like to talk about here is the Pico BNC Plus resistance lead and the advantages of graphing resistance over time. Now, traditionally, um, we've always used the meter. Uh, multimeter here, set to ohms. Uh, good practice, of course, is to zero out the leads or just to see what resistance that you have within those leads. So join them together. And here we've got uh, 0.14 ohm. Right, so on our demo board, this demo board is completely dead. It's simulating a, a vehicle with the battery disconnected. So everything on here is, has no power and various components that we've broken into. So here we have four injectors. We've broken into the ignition coil pack here, temperature sensor, uh, throttle position sensor. So let's just go from the start, simply doing a resistance test on an injector. And no surprises there, 14 ohms. Is that good? Is that bad? Well, of course, we check with the spec. Good practice, though, is the wiggle test, isn't it? Whilst we're doing this, see if we get any change in the resistance. And because it's an injector, if we can tap the body, and see what happens there. It looks reasonably stable. Bear in mind, we can't record this data. We could plot the data if we so wish with the um, Pico meter. We can connect the dongle and relay it across and it will plot so many samples per second. Um, let me jump straight to injector number four because uh, this is what I'm really curious or really would like to show you. Uh, once again, we're at 14 ohms, but if I tap the body of that, you see how that is dancing around there? 14, occasionally that would go to 16. So there's a, a suspicion around that injector. Um, coil primary, let's have a look at that. So here we would go from the middle pin, uh, compare one coil pack, uh, one primary winding, sorry, uh, 0.5 of an ohm. Same again here with the other side, hopefully that will be the same, okay. Message I'm trying to get across here is we've got values, we can log them, most likely we're going to write them down, but there's no way really of, of recording this against time, especially this injector that we had here. Uh, another example, let's have a look at the throttle body. So let's say we go between the um, signal and the power, so there we are at 4.7 kilo ohm, and then of course as we progressively open the throttle body, that resistance comes down, but we aren't plotting. So what I'd like to do now is introduce the Pico BNC Plus resistance lead. Um, Picoscope is running here. Notice that when I connect it to channel A, the software instantly recognizes it's a resistance lead. And we will run with the lowest value or the lowest range. It's important to get the range correct for what we're measuring. Well, let's zero the leads out first of all, as we did with the meter, best practice of course. Join these together and we want to see as low as possible. Uh, I can bring in the time ruler here, sorry, the signal ruler, and we are around about 119 milliohms, something like that. Maybe if I was a little bit more accurate, what we can do, we can add a measurement. So if I put the mean value across the whole trace, there we are. So its actual value is 60 milliohms when joined together. Take that apart, we'll notice that's gone open circuit, as we'd expect. So let's go back to the injector put this on something really slow, take away the ruler, and start with injector number one. So measure continuity. We have got approximately 14 ohms, as we had on the meter. Let me just bring the signal ruler in. 14.5 ohm. Let's do a wiggle test. Interesting straight away. There is something there, wow, either in our connection or within maybe the solenoid itself within the injector. So let's just tap the body of that. Yeah, there is something, something that we didn't really pick up with the meter initially. Let's move over to what we thought was our offending injector, injector number four. So we are just broken into the injector. They are disconnected from the harness. And already I think we saw there, we have a slight difference. We are at 14.5, uh, is it? Something like that. 
at 14.6. Let's slow it down because we really want to graph this slowly over time. We've gone for one second divisions. So now you'll see there that we're drawing real time. And just look at that when I tap that injector body. <laughs> that is a real concern, isn't it? So proof in the pudding. Let me just go back through our buffer. There we have it. We have a resistance change of um, our fixed resistance without any uh, wiggle testing or intrusion from us was around about 14 and a half ohms. And there we are at uh, 16, a difference of 1.9 ohms purely by wiggle testing this. So again, benefits of graphing over time. The next measurement was coil primary. So why is graphing coil primary against time so beneficial? Well, let's go from the middle pin, which would normally be the power supply to, of the primary, uh, to the switch side of the primary for one, uh, one coil. And here we are very low, actually. We should be down to something like 0.5 of an ohm. Yeah, we are 550 milliohm approximately. I'm going to slow this down a little bit further because there's some nice features you can take advantage of in Picascope. And we'll measure one against the other. There we are. Pause that. So what we actually did there, um, from left to right, we had pins two to three. Um, after our open circuit, where I disconnected and changed to the other primary circuit, we had pins um, one to two. What we can do now in the software is if we go to views and go to add a scope view, we've now got um, completely two different views that we can utilize and also another set of time rulers. So you'll see here that I've placed time rulers between secondary pins two and three, and on scope view two, secondary, uh, sorry, primary coil one and two, two and three, sorry, primary one and two on scope view two, and now we can add measurements. So if I click on scope view one, this is our active view, go to measurements and ask for the mean value between the time rulers. And on uh, scope view one, we have 588 milliohm between the time rulers. Click on now scope view two, I'll just move these out of the way. We'll go to measurements once again. We'll go to the mean value we want the mean value between the time rulers and we want that on scope view two. And we have 605. So now there's a means to actually file, save as all this data. And we can add into our notes section something like scope view one. Uh, let's go primary between pins two and three. And then we can say the same for scope view two, so on and so forth. We can go to our save option, populate the vehicle details, and then save. There you have a hard copy of the resistance of the primary circuit, both primaries. Remember there's two within this coil pack between two and three and one and two. So neat feature there. Uh, yes, you had the advantage of doing something similar, but here you have a hard copy. Remember, time and date stamped as well. All right, so moving on then to, let's go to the throttle body. And um, because it's a throttle body, we need to change the uh, input range. So first of all, we'll go to views. We'll go reset. We'll close all the notes and all the measurements. Sorry, views, reset, and we'll change our range now. Uh, we want quite a high resistance for our throttle body. It was uh, five to 20 kilo ohm. This is no different to changing the range on your meter. Um, if the meter's non-auto ranging or you wanted to change the range manually, exactly the same, um, 
obviously check specifications of what this resistance should be and then uh, enter the range accordingly. So now we'll run Picascope. We'll keep it on a slow time frame as we had before. Uh, once again, we're gonna go between what would be the supply and the middle pin for our throttle body. And already we can see there, we are at just under five kilo ohm. Uh, we saw on the meter, we could do exactly the same, but now we'll be able to plot the transition rather than just seeing values plotted at a very slow sample rate. Uh, between uh, closed and open. We can plot that, in, uh, plot that entire process. So let me just open the throttle. You see it there. And we can do that as fast as we want because Picoscope is fast enough to capture this. So we could be looking for any transients. We um, can change the uh, scaling on here as well. So if I go to the display and then up that to times two, and then just bring this up a little bit. We can make much more use of the graph view. There we are. So now we see a real transition. And if we wanted to, we could add a trigger to that. So if we went to trigger, we'll go repeat trigger. We'll have it on a falling edge. Um, and let's put that threshold at something like, uh, I don't know, let's say approximately three and a half kilo ohm. So now we can just do this as many times as we want. We may want to do it buffer by buffer, so we'll speed this up. All right, we're running there. One capture. Something a little bit slower. And then something as fast as we can. There we are. So there, we can actually look for any dropouts any fallout, any spikes, anything on that track that we, uh, we suspect or we think may be influencing the position of the throttle signal, we can calculate and measure with the resistance lead. Let's also just try um, a wheel test as well. So let's put it again on something really slow. Take away the trigger. And then just hold it in that position. Nothing there. We'll let that come around again and tap here. Minimal. Not sure whether there might be something in the breakout leads. It doesn't look like it. So our measurement equipment is okay because there's no wonder there. So anything that we're getting when we tap the body there could well be uh, applicable to the resistance or the track within the throttle body. All right, um, finally then would be temperature, graphing temperature against time. So here we go into our temperature probe. Now this is very high. This one I think is going to need a range from minus 50 to 200 kilo ohm. Uh, again, we'll change the range. So if we go to, sorry, the scaling. So we'll go to uh, the display. Oh, we're already at times two, which is good. And we'll check now how this uh, thermistor responds. So it's negative temperature coefficient, so its resistance will decrease with an increase in temperature. Uh, and we'll apply temperature now as well, so, or an increase in temperature. So we'll just warm this up slightly. And we see there that we are getting a transition. Temperature's coming down. And then that will plateau and then come back again. So let's just go back. And we started here at 43 ohms. And then we ended up, before we turned off the heat, 13.7 um, kilo ohms. So 43.6 kilo ohm to 13.37 kilo ohm. Uh, and if we now were to run the scope again, we would see that we are starting to climb back up because the thermistor is cooling. Put that on a really slow time frame, we'd get much more of a transition we'd actually get. If we put it on something like, um, let's say 50 second divisions, we'll see the start as we heat it, we'll see the, temp the resistance come down. Of course, if we take the heat away, it will start to cool and the temperature will increase. So uh, a number of benefits there. I hope that um, helps clarify um, the resistance lead and why we have an why we would graph against time and the advantages there are. All right, thanks for watching.